Hi, I'm Madeline Dressel, and today I'm going to show you um, our collection of clone vintage fashion dolls, uh, particularly clone Barbie dolls. And I'm going to put a few uh, contemporary uh, fashion doll lines that probably should not be considered clones, uh, but they fit very nicely um, in this um, series of dolls that I want to show you today. So I think what I will do is I'm going to start uh, with the dolls from the early 90s, late 80s, and work backwards to about 1960, uh, mid-60s, which are, you know, what you probably are thinking about when you think of a vintage Barbie clone. So the first two uh, that I want to show you are Hasbro Maxi. So Hasbro Maxi was, of course, obviously produced by Hasbro. Uh, this is the 1987 version. And this is the 1989 version. Um, so they're marked um, 1987 and 1989 Hasbro um, on the back of their heads. So this is the um, Making Waves Maxi, and this is Sunsplash Maxi. And so they were, you know, of course, your you know, surfer girl persona. They were made by Hasbro after the gym line had kind of fizzled out. So uh, they're very athletic dolls. Um, one of the things that I noticed when I first ran into them, and I found these both at thrift stores, I'd actually um, never seen them before. I wasn't familiar with the, um, the, tel the, the uh, television show that went with them, but they have very um, substantial arms. So they have, you know, nice musculature. They've got, you know, large defined hands. Um, they have, of course, the click knees that you would expect for a doll of that era. From what I understand when researching the dolls, they were um, slightly lower price point than Barbie at the same time. So they were appealing to parents in that respect. Um, but they overall are very well-made dolls. They are very good quality um, saran hair, you know, nice um, vinyl, you know, very uh, good quality in general. They're both, in this case, just wearing Barbie fashions. I have not perused my uh, box of clone fashions enough to actually be able to identify if I have any uh, actual maxi clothes. So for now, they're just wearing um, some some early 90s uh, Barbie mini dresses. All right, so the next two um, dolls that I'm going to show you are, I believe, Betty Teen. So the face is, is Betty Teen. From what I have looked up in my Google searching, the uh, Betty Teen dolls can have a number of markings. So these were all um, late 80s, early 90s. Uh, they are typically marked either Tong or MNC made in China. These two are both just marked made in China at the back of their head, uh, but they do have the gold sticker on their back that says made in China, which I think is also um, an indi indicative of the Betty Teen dolls. And so, these ones, again, are just wearing 90s Barbie fashions, but they are a really nice doll overall, good quality of vinyl, you know, the click knees. In this case, um, they don't have twist and turn waists, but they would have been a lower price point than uh, Barbie at the same time. So they, they're actually, you know, fairly uh, endeared uh, to collectors. Um, a lot of clone collectors like to collect uh, the Betty Teen dolls, and they came in a variety of hairstyles and hair colors. Um, an interesting fact, if you collect any of the Gloria uh, furniture, um, so these were also the Gloria dolls. So before we leave the 80s and 90s, this is a Takara Jenny doll. So in 1982, um, Barbie uh, Mattel 
uh, sold to Cara the right to license the Barbie name. And because the more traditional looking Barbie dolls weren't selling as well in Japan, they ended up um, redoing the look of Barbie herself. And what they came up with was Takara Barbie. And she looks, if you're familiar with Japanese anime and Japanese aesthetic, you know, much more what we are used to now and seeing in Japanese dolls. So she has the slightly, you know, fuller, more uh, youthful face, and she has those big anime eyes. So this is actually one of Malachi's dolls. So Malachi loves um, the anime dolls, the big eye dolls, and, and this is his. Um, so in 1982, as I was mentioning, that's when Takara licensed the Barbie name. And then in 1986, the partnership with Mattel ended and the doll just became Takara Jenny. I don't actually know enough about uh, the Takara Barbie versus Takara Jenny to tell you if this is definitely Takara Barbie or Takara Jenny. My guess is it's probably Jenny, which would have been made after 1986. But she's a really nice doll. She has bendable legs, but they're you know, a little bit, you know, they're just, they're just a wire, so they're they're a little bit less aesthetically pleasing than the click knees. But she's a really cool doll. She has wonderful hair, and um, she can, had lots of really awesome uh, outfits available for her as well. So this lady is marked on her back uh, Durham Industries number 3042. She's made in Hong Kong and she is um, a Charlie doll by Durham Toy Industries. So she's probably either, from what I can find, 1979 or 1980. Um, I just put her in this wonderful clone outfit that I have. It's got these matching shorts. My guess is it's probably either a Shulman clone outfit or a Miss or Maddie Maud. So she's a much lower quality doll, so you can tell um, she's only been sort of minorly rooted around her forehead and her plastic, it's very light, uh, blow molded plastic, there's a lot of flashing left. Uh, she does have a twist and turn waist and she's, she's very tan, so she's you know, probably competing with those, those, the, the Malibu um, and you know, sensation uh, Barbies of the era. She would have been quite a bit cheaper. She does have a very vivid green eyes, which when I put a photo up, you'll be able to see more clearly uh, the eye color. Overall, she's definitely a fun addition uh, to the clone group. But uh, beyond her name, I really don't know much about her. She was probably the equivalent of a dollar store doll. Um, you know, very inexpensive, but um, still very charming. So another uh, probably late 70s, um, early 80s doll, um, all I can find out, um, she's marked made in Hong Kong. Um, so this is a really wonderful um, Afri uh, African-American or black uh, bubble cut fashion doll. This is not her original body. The original body she came with was very uh, poor quality blow molded plastic. It kind of kept falling apart. So I just packed it away and instead I put her on a Mattel Barbie uh, made to move so she can be, you know, she's really you know, able to, to pose now and you know, really show off those wonderful features. So uh, black clone dolls, particularly um, you know, 60s and, and um, that era, very difficult to find, very sought after by collectors. Um, they do exist, but not in the quantities of um, the other dolls. And so whenever you can find one, uh, that's really awesome. I actually found her in a thrift store, so I was very excited to take her home with me. And so she's wearing um, another clone outfit. I think that this is a Maddie Mod clone outfit. I've seen a couple of them um, on the packaging that don't have the pom-poms, but otherwise look the same. And I think from what I was reading, I have to refer to my notes here, that um, the outfit is called um, Out of Sight. And so uh, the earrings that she's wearing also are not, um, are, are not hers originally. 
so she was missing one of her earrings and so I just replaced them uh, with some Barbie earrings that I had at hand. So while we're on the subject of jointed dolls, this is a really interesting doll. So she's probably uh, mid 60s. So this is Polly Play Pose by Valentine. Um, so she is very unusual. She has the 13 points of articulation. She is a strung doll. So in this case, she's actually pretty loose and, and needs to be restrung with, with new elastic. But um, there was another um, identical doll that, or almost identical doll that Valentine sold, uh, which is Debbie Drake after the, um, the fitness instructor. However, um, Debbie Drake dolls have platinum blonde hair, and so that's how you can tell the difference between a Debbie Drake uh, or a Polly Play Pose. So, she, again, very, uh, you know, very poseable, um, or she would be if she was um, restrung. She's wearing a really nice um, knit clone outfit that I found her. I have no idea who made this outfit, but if anybody who's watching uh, knows, I would love to know, so please tell me in the comments. But she's an interesting doll. Uh, she has kind of an unfortunate hairdo. This is, um, it hasn't been cut. This is pretty much what it looked like. Um, I guess to re um, resemble the bubble cut hairstyle that was popular at the time with uh, Barbie, but not using the same quality hair. It's kind of flattened and crumbled a bit, but um, she's a really neat doll to have. Um, really nice to have uh, as a clone collector. But, uh, so this is Polly Play Pose. All right, so taking a, a, a break from the teen fashion dolls for a minute, this is a Marty Grant uh, Skipper clone by Allied Eastern. She's marked AE18 um, on the back of her head, or AE1964, sorry. And so she's um, a, just a little Skipper clone. She's, she's as clones go, fairly good quality. She, her hair is nice. She has kind of rubbery arms. You know, her plastic is not abnormally thin and so she's you know fairly sturdy uh, this is another little clone outfit that I found um, that I, I don't know much about but this would be uh, my skipper clone and so I figured I would would show her along with the rest of the clones while we were doing this little little tour um, so the next three dolls that I want to show you I'm going to show them to you as a group are Cindy and Tammy clones. So I have um, what I guess due to her her neck structure is probably more of a Cindy clone and so she's got this blonde bubble cut hairstyle. She has very rubbery arms and very um, cheap quality uh, plastic uh, uh, legs. She's actually I've dressed her in a, in a Tammy fashion. It's uh, Tammy's uh, dream boat fashion, just a little uh, jacket and a party dress. The next um, Cindy clone that I have is this one. And she was actually just a head. So she's borrowing a, a Barbie body until I can find her um, the appropriate clone body to put her back on. She's got a, you know, a hairstyle that I hadn't really seen before. Uh, it is a platinum blonde ponytail, but then there are bangs and I guess a, a shag haircut that are rooted all the way around. And I don't think this has a, a been cut in the back. I think it's just um, the, the style that it was meant to be in, but it's very interesting. It's very different. Um, and she's a, a very adorable little doll. And then for my Tammy clone, she's really unusual. So she has uh, green hair does not appear to be a reroute. Um, you'll notice the neck is different with this, um, the Cindy dolls, and so therefore the Cindy clones are jointed, you know, right here, much like Barbie. Whereas Tammy, and in this case her clone, uh, the neck and the head are all one piece and they meet at the shoulders. So she's a very nice quality for a clone doll. She has soft, rubbery arms. She has, uh, you know, for the most part, good quality. Uh, legs except the heels here have had some damage that was where the the plastic was very thin and so it's it's broken away 
Her hair is much better quality than these two. It's not falling apart. It's still holding its curl. It's a lovely, um, you know, lime green. And so she's a really nice doll as well. But none of these dolls have markings. I have no idea who made them, you know, company-wise or exactly when. But they are a lot of fun, and especially our, our little, little shamrock here. So as I mentioned um, in the introduction, not all of the dolls that I'm going to show you can really legitimately be called clones. So the next two are by Ideal. I figure this, since I've just shown you the, um, the clones of Ideal Tammy, which I don't actually have in my collection, I figured I would show you um, some of Ideal's other doll lines. So this is Misty, Tammy's friend. Um, she's wearing a uh, Babs outfit. It's called Arabesque. It's really nice. It's got these little velour pants and this sort of this wrap shirt dress. So this is um, Ideal Misty. She's got you know lovely red lipstick, green eyeshadow, this nice blonde flip. And so I was familiar with Ideal Mitzi. Or just, I'm not sorry. I'll, we'll talk about Ideal Mitzi in a minute. I was familiar with Ideal Misty. And so when I was given this doll, she was given to me um, that I'm going to show you next. Oops, having a little little uh, catastrophe over there. So this doll was given to me as, uh, uh, from a very good friend of mine and a lot of other dolls just to, to go through and, and, and see that he'd found. And I was really delighted to, with them. And I was familiar, of course, with Misty. I was also familiar with the uh, Pose and Glamour version of Misty. And so Pose and Glamour Misty has, um, you know, bendable legs, her arms move, and she has that same sort of grown-up face that uh, Misty does. Now, this doll originally had red hair, and not being very familiar with um, the ideal Misty dolls in general or ideals uh, lines that use this face mold, I assumed it was, um, you know, Pose and Glamour Misty. She also had a really big orange spot on her face, and so I was treating that with acne cream, and while I was treating it with acne cream, it got on the hair, and it basically, it oxidized it to this gorgeous um, yellow, which reminds me so much of the yellow that Color Magic, Magic Barbie has, and so she already had, you know, big yellow splotch in her hair, and so I just went ahead and recolored it to this yellow. And I was very pleased with how she turned out. Uh, she was really, really a mess when, when I got her. And then, um, so I posted her on the clone website, and some you know much more educated um, clone collectors than I did uh, told me that this is not, in, indeed not Pose and Glamour Misty. This is a very rare Super Queen uh, comic heroine Mira doll. So, so that was a bit of a shock that you know I'd accidentally uh, dyed a, a very rare doll's hair um, from her original sort of a Titan red color to uh, the um, Color Magic yellow. Um, on the other hand, I did get rid of the gigantic orange mark across her face, and you know I'm, she, she's a, a birthday present, so I have no plans to sell her. So while I do feel a teensy little bit of guilt. I really, really like the yellow color, so I would, I'm, 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 I'm happy to keep her this way. All right, so these are the two, um, you know, two ideal dolls that use the the misty face mold. So while we're on the subject of ideal dolls, this is another ideal doll that I want to show you. So this is Ideal's uh, Mitzi. So she is um, probably one of the loveliest clones, in my opinion, and one of my favorites in the collection. So she has a much more build Lily or Barbie style face. She has the molded eyelashes. She has the you know, rosebud mouth. Her hair is a much better quality than a lot of the, um, the clones. So of course, Ideal usually used very good quality Saran hair, um, which is why their doll's hair really stands up to time. 
So it's always really helpful when you're trying to identify a clone doll, um, when the manufacturer actually puts the doll's name on the doll itself. And so she is marked Mitzi, Ideal Toy Company, 1960. Um, the dress that she's wearing is one of my favorite clone dresses. I haven't found it exactly when I've, I've tried to search for it. I have found that Elite Creations um, Windy line um, did have another dress um, that was new in box um, in the auction that I was looking at uh, that used the same fabric. So that's, that's my best guess as to um, who actually made the dress that I have, have her in. So this is, again, this is Ideal Mitzi. So these next two dolls, these are also probably uh, early 1960s. Um, I believe they are both E.G. Miss Babette. I know that this one is because she's marked um, E.G. 18. This one has no markings at all. However, the um, molds are essentially identical and the, and the face paint is very, very similar to where, you know, they really seem like they're probably, you know, if not technically the same manufacturer, were probably made in the same factory um, for different um, different you know subsidiary companies. So they again really resemble what you think of when you think of a vintage Barbie. They have the molded eyelashes. Um, in this case, they have more of the resemblance to a number one or two. In which case, the the eyes are just black and white. There's no color. Rosebud mouths. Um, she has an updo with the original string, so I'm pretty sure that this has not been uh, modified, and of course she was uh, more of a, a ponytail. Uh, the dresses that they're wearing in this case, I believe this is actually uh, just a very well-made mommy-made dress, judging from the, the seams inside. Uh, this is a commercially made clone dress. I don't know who made it, but it does have a paper uh, made in Hong Kong label on the inside. So again, this is another one if anyone um, knows who it belongs to, I would love to, to, to know. So you please you know, put that in the comments if, if you happen to know. All right, so these are Miss Babette. So the last doll that I wanna show you is one of my favorites and it's very um, desirable among clone collectors. So this is Unita Suzette, or Miss Suzette to be uh, very accurate because I believe there was another Suzette doll um, that she's sometimes confused with. So she has an extraordinarily lovely face in my opinion. She has very striking, heavily made up eyes. Again, with the molded eyelashes, she has bright red lips. Um, she, she's the the eyes are very you know heavily side glancing so she's always just sort of sort of looking at you. Her hair is is not the same quality as the ideal doll sadly so it's sort of um, broken off and is a little bit shorter but it's still overall in, in nice shape. She's actually um, came with a large variety of outfits. This is um, the coat to her out. Um, I think it's called theater going. So one of the unusual things about Miss Unette is her Miss Suzette is her body construction. So if you're you know out there and you find a Miss Suzette doll, um, the torso is very odd. So it's basically just sort of two legs pinned to her torso with this little um, connector. And so it's it's a very different design from any of the other clones or contemporary uh, fashion dolls. But she is a wonderful example, and I, I probably got her 10 or 15 years ago when she was uh, much more reasonable. It's hard to find one now on eBay, uh, you know, for you know, but you know, less than $100. Most of the time, they're easily between one and $200, particularly if they have really um, nice quality hair, which is really you know the only thing that is a flaw in my opinion um, in terms of the doll's quality and construction. So I hope you enjoyed getting to see um, the collection of uh, clone fashion dolls. I hope that all of you at home are staying safe, washing your hands regularly. And until next time, be seeing you.